Let's now go into the graph editor so we can adjust the shape of the ball's trajectory. Window, Animation Editors, Graph Editor. And I've got the ball selected. And what I see here is time running from left to right and the value of a channel running up and down. And if I select a channel, for example, Translate Y, and press F on the keyboard to frame, now I'm seeing a graph. Time is running left to right, value is running up and down. So this is the position of the ball over time. So what do we want to do here? Well, like I said, we want to make it come up and then down, hit the ground, and then rebound. So what we need here is this keyframe at frame 24 has got to have broken tangent handles. So a tangent handle is this little line sticking out from the keyframe. So we can select a tangent handle with the left mouse button. And then if we want to move the tangent handle, we'll use the middle mouse button with the Move Keys tool active. And you can choose the Move Keys tool from the standard toolbox. Or just hit the W key on your keyboard. So once again, you've got to press W or otherwise select the Move Keys tool. Select the tangent handle with the left mouse button. Then hold down the middle mouse button to adjust the tangent handle. And it's kind of like what you're used to from programs like Illustrator or Photoshop with paths. So this is a Bezier curve or Bezier spline and it works the same way. It's just that in Maya the interface is different. So again I'm going to use the left mouse button to select and the middle mouse button to drag to change the shape of the curve. So to achieve the effect of broken handles where we can move the incoming curve handle and the outgoing curve handle independently, what we'll do is we'll select the keyframe and then the graph editor has a toolbar and here we've got a section for tangents and we can click break tangents. Now the tangents are displayed in two different colors. I can select the incoming handle and once again with the move keys tool active hold down the middle mouse button and select the outgoing handle and then click at the middle mouse button and we can do the same for the other keyframes as well to adjust the shape of the curve. We can navigate in the graph editor with the shortcut keys just like in viewports so I can do alt middle mouse or alt right mouse to change my view go over here, select a keyframe, select it with the left mouse, move the handle with the middle mouse button. So let's check our work. We'll minimize the graph editor and then click in the camera view to give it focus and press the play button. We've got something pretty good to start with. So if we want to adjust this, Perhaps we want to make it such that the, the ball is a little bit closer to the camera. We could change the animation, or maybe we could change the camera view. Let's see what happens if we change the camera view. So I'll use the standard keyboard shortcuts, Alt and Middle Mouse, to position the camera. And then let's rewind and play back. That's a little bit better. Or I could use the third person method of adjusting the camera view by going into the perspective or any of the other views and moving the camera or its target. Remembering that we want to make sure that our ground plane is taking up the full frame. Maybe we should move the ground plane accordingly. We're making final adjustments to our shot Maybe the ground plane could be a little bit larger. I'll go back into the polyplane inputs and let's make it 450 by 450. And there we go. We'll play back and see how that suits us. 
There we go. That's pretty good. Make the final adjustment just dolly forward a little bit in the camera. Alt and right mouse to dolly forward just a little. We've got a good starting animation. So we'll go ahead and hit File, Save Scene As, and now we're up to ball04.ma. So that's a pretty good starting point. I'm going to go back into the graph editor with the ball selected. Got my graph editor minimized. And make a couple other adjustments. Let's take a look at the Translate X channel. So I'll highlight that name and press F to frame the curve. And you'll see it has three keyframes as well. Well, in this case, we could simplify this by just having two keyframes because we're just going to assume that this ball is moving forward at a constant velocity, that it's not speeding up or slowing down as it moves forward. So I can select this keyframe and just press the delete key on my keyboard. And now with only two keyframes, I've got a linear curve. So it's a straight line. Good. So, and back in our Translate Y, one last thing about fine tuning in the graph editor. You might notice that if you select a tangent handle and then use the Move Keys tool with the middle mouse button to move it, that you're not able to stretch the tangent handle. You might be used to that from a program like Illustrator or After Effects where you're able to stretch the length of the handle to influence the shape of the curve. Well, you can do it in Maya, but you just have to jump through a couple extra hoops to get that functionality. First of all, you want to select the curve. Just click to select the entire curve. Then in the Graph Editor's Curves menu, down at the very bottom, the last item in the list is Weighted Tangents. So when you issue this command, it'll make it possible for the tangent handles to have variable length. So now I'll see that the handles are in fact longer and I see a filled in circle at the end of the handle. And once again I can select with left mouse and move with middle mouse but yet still even though it's a longer handle it's still locked. I can't change the length. So then additionally, for each keyframe, I need to free the tangent weights. So I'm going to drag a big box with my left mouse button to select all of the keyframes. And in the graph editor toolbar up here, I've got free tangent weight. There we go. So this is locked and this is free. So I'm going to click on free. And now finally, we've got stretchy tangent handles like we're used to from other Bezier curve editing in other programs. We're going to make our final adjustments to the ball's parabolic trajectory here. Rewind and play back in our camera view.